Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to go over five worked examples covering conservation of energy. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question one says that an eight kilogram mass has a kinetic energy of 1,600 joules. How fast is it traveling? Well, writing down what we know from the question first, we're trying to find the speed. We know that the mass is eight kilograms. We know that the kinetic energy is 1,600 joules. And writing down our equation for the kinetic energy, we have ek equals a half mv squared. Substituting in our numbers now, we have 1600 equals a half times 8 times v squared. And then what we can do is multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction and divide both sides by 8 to get rid of the 8 from the right hand side. And we end up with v squared equals 400. And then taking the square root of v squared to get v on its own, we have v equals 20 meters per second. Question 2 says that a trolley is released from rest at point X and it accelerates down the slope to point Y. Assuming friction to be negligible, calculate the speed of the trolley at point Y. So we want to find the speed of the trolley when it reaches the bottom of the slope down here. So by conservation of energy, we can say that the loss in gravitational potential energy when the trolley is at the top of the slope is equal to the gain in kinetic energy of the trolley as it moves down the slope. So we are assuming no energy losses in this case, and we can then write down what we know. So we're trying to find the speed of the trolley at V. We know that the mass is two kilograms from the picture. We know the gravitational field strength on Earth is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And we know the height h of the trolley above the track is 1.2 meters. So we can then equate our two expressions. So we have mgh equals a half mv squared. So those are just our two expressions, one for gravitational potential energy and one for kinetic energy. We can then start substituting in the numbers. So we have two times 9.8 times 1.2 is equal to a half times two times v squared. And then you'll see that a half times two just becomes one and one times v squared is just v squared so that simplifies to v squared equals 23.52 and then if we square root both sides we end up with v equals 4.8 meters per second. Question 3 says that Miley Cyrus swings on a wrecking ball whilst filming her music video for the song. The director of the video notices the similarity to a pendulum and maps out the motion of the ball to ensure he gets the right shot. Points A and C are the extremities of the swing of the wrecking ball. The mass of the ball is 450 kilograms. So we've got A, B and C. We've got ground level just below B there and point C and A will be 30 centimeters above point B. We're then asked to find the maximum potential energy of the ball in part A. So to find the maximum potential energy, this is going to be at the extremities of the swing at either point A or point C when the ball is a height of 30 centimeters above ground level. And we know the mass of the ball is 450 kilograms. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the maximum potential energy. We know the mass is 450 kilograms and G is 9.8 newtons per kilogram on Earth and h is 0.3 meters. And that is found just by converting the 30 centimeters into meters, so that's 0.3 meters. Writing down our equation for EP max this time, so I've just put in a little subscript max because it's maximum potential energy this time. So EP max equals mgh. Putting in our numbers now gives 450 times 9.8 times 0 0.3, which gives an answer of 1,323 joules once you put that into your calculator. Part B says to find the maximum kinetic energy of the ball. Well, assuming friction is negligible and that there's going to be no energy losses, we can say that the maximum kinetic energy of the wrecking ball is going to be equal to the maximum potential energy because the energy is just going to be converted from one into the other form with no energy loss. And we've just worked out what the maximum potential energy is, so we can say that this is simply equal to 1,323 joules. Lastly, part C says to find the top speed of the ball. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the speed. We know the mass is 450 kilograms. The maximum kinetic energy is equal to 1,323 joules. And that is gonna give us the top speed because it's the maximum kinetic energy. Notice that I've just dropped off the little max subscript there, but you could write it if you want to keep it all consistent. Then writing down our equation, we have ek equals a half mv squared. You could use ek max equals a half mv max squared if you wanted to. But putting in the numbers now, we have 1,323 equals a half times 450 times v squared. Multiplying both sides by two and then dividing both sides by 450 will give us an expression for V squared equals 5.88. And then square rooting both sides as we've done before, we get V equals 2.4 meters per second. Question four says that in an experiment to calculate the power developed by a man, he runs up a flight of stairs as fast as he can. 
The man took 5 seconds to run up the stairs. Use the information given to calculate his power. So you'll notice that in the picture it gives us a mass of 70 kilograms and a height of the stairs of 4.30 meters. So we need to realise first of all that the man will gain gravitational potential energy as he climbs the stairs. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the gravitational potential energy. We know that the mass is 70 kilograms. The gravitational field strength on Earth is 9.8 newtons per kilogram and the height is 4.30 meters. So writing down our equation, we have EP equals MGH. Substituting in the numbers, we get 70 times 9.8 times 4.30, which gives an answer of 2,949.8 joules. But notice that we've not answered the question yet because they asked us to calculate its power, not the gravitational potential energy. But what we can then do, now that we know an energy value, we can use the relationship between power, energy and time. So writing down what we know, we're trying to find power. We know that the energy is 2,949.8. I've deliberately not rounded that value just so that we get a more accurate value for this final answer. And then our time is 5 seconds. So writing down our equation, we have P equals E over T. And substituting in our numbers, we get that this equals 2,949.8 divided by 5. Put that into your calculator and that should give you 590 watts. Lastly, question 5 says that a 3 kilogram trolley is placed on a slope with an angle of 25 degrees to the horizontal. The trolley starts at a height of 0.5 meters above the ground and reaches a speed of 1.5 meters per second at the end of the slope. Part A says to find the force acting down the slope. Well, this is asking for the force parallel to the slope, and remember we looked at the inclined plane or an object on a slope, and we saw the parallel component of the weight is going to be given by mg sine theta, so that's what we're going to use here. So writing down what we know, we're trying to find the parallel component of the weight, because that is a force. We know the mass is 3 kilograms, the gravitational field strength on Earth is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, and the angle theta here is 25 degrees. So writing down our equation for the component of weight parallel to the slope, we have W equals mg sine theta, which equals the 3 times 9.8 times sine 25, which if you put into your calculator, should give an answer of 12.4 newtons. Part B says to find the kinetic and potential energy. So we're just going to use our two separate equations to find these. So firstly, for the kinetic energy, we're trying to find EK. We know that mass is 3 kilograms. We know that the speed V is 1.5 meters per second. And putting that into our equation, EK equals a half mv squared. This should equal half times 3 times 1.5 squared, which if you put into your calculator, should give an answer of 3.4 joules. We also have the potential energy that we're trying to find. So for potential energy, we're trying to find EP. We know that mass is 3 kilograms. We know that G is 9.8 newtons per kilogram and that the height H is 0.5 meters. Writing down our equation for potential energy, we have EP equals MGH and substituting in the numbers gives us 3 times 9.8 times 0.5, which if you put into your calculator should give an answer of 14.7 joules. Almost there, part C is asking us to find the work done by friction. So the first thing we need to realise here is that we cannot use the equation for work done here since we don't know what F is. And remember F is involved in the equation for work done. So if we don't know what F is, we can't use that equation. So we must be able to find the work done by friction by some other means. So the way we do this is we can use conservation of energy instead. And so what we can do is we can say that the work done is equal to the gravitational potential energy minus the kinetic energy. So that difference between the two energies that we've already calculated will be the energy that has been lost to friction, i.e. the work done. So this is going to be equal to 14.7 minus 3.4, which are our two answers that we've worked out earlier. So this is equal to 11.3 joules. Lastly, part D says to find the average force of friction acting on the trolley. So this time we're trying to find a force and we now know a value for the work done and we know a distance value from the question. So writing down what we know, we're trying to find the force F, we know the work done is 11.3 joules and the distance is 1.5 meters. So we're going to be using the work done equation this time. So EW equals FD, putting in the numbers gives us 11.3 equals F times 1.5. And then rearranging for F, we do 11.3 divided by 1.5 gives us 7.5 newtons. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it one of these, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.